Welcome. History and data. Without these tools, we can't make an informed decision in the present. But in the case of infectious diseases and vaccines, we have largely ignored these because of widespread groupthink. So today, I'd like to share some history and data that is freely available to the public from official government institutions. Measles. Mortality data began to be recorded in the United States in 1900. The first measles vaccine became available in 1963. Unfortunately, it had severe problems and was later switched to a different type of vaccine that became available in 1967. However, the death rate for measles had already declined by more than 98% before 1963. Looking at the measles mortality trend line, it's clear there isn't much of an impact on death rate. Mortality data began to be recorded in England in 1838, so compared to the United States, they have a longer history of data to look at. The measles vaccine became available in 1968, and by that year, the death rate from measles had declined by over 99.9%. Looking at the measles mortality trend line, it's clear there isn't any impact on the death rate. As with other Western countries, the mortality rate from measles had declined significantly in France before the vaccine became available in 1966. Yet after its introduction, vaccination rates remained low. In 1983, the vaccination rate was less than 20%. In that year, there were 20 deaths attributed to measles out of a population of over 54 million. That is a death rate of point. 037 per 100,000 or approximately 1 in 2.7 million. By 1989, the vaccination rate was still less than 40%. In that year, there were three deaths attributed to measles, which is a rate of 0.005 per 100,000 or 1 in 19.37 million. Whooping cough. In the United States, the death rate had fallen by over 90% before the introduction of the vaccine in the mid-1940s. In England, the death rate from whooping cough had fallen by over 99% before a vaccine was in widespread use. In England, in the late 1970s, there was a scare that caused whooping cough vaccination rates to drop. Yet the number of deaths per year was near zero before the vaccine was even being used. And when vaccination rates dropped, there was no detectable increase in fatalities. Scarlet fever. The deaths from this disease went to zero without any vaccine. Flu. Flu pneumonia deaths declined by about 90% before vaccines for the flu began in the late 1970s. Afterward, deaths actually went up for a period of time before returning again to those levels despite high vaccination rates. So after 40 years, there has been no improvement in the mortality rate from the flu. All these charts are constructed from official, government gathered, and other official data. Yet no government posts this data or charts on their websites. No medical organization explains this data to the public. The media never examines this data. There are no medical or history programs that ever talk about this information. Why? What lessons could we have learned if organizations had examined this data and determine the reasons for the massive declines in death before vaccination programs. Would we even need any vaccination programs? Have we as a global society made an enormous blunder in how we treat diseases and health? Should these organizations be trusted in the present if they don't know about their own data or refuse to explain it to the public? All these charts and references that were used to construct them can be found at dissolvingillusions.com if you like this video, please share. Thank you for your time. Have a stellar day.